How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Spotify LCD956 Fishing HQ, your fishing headquarters on Spotify. So welcome back everybody and for those that are um, coming for the first time to our podcast, welcome. And um, if you don't know what this podcast is about, it's basically about fishing. So you will like it if you're a fisherman, even if you're your starting fisherman to your more advanced fisherman. This is the podcast channel for you. So today we have a special guest here at the LCD 956 Bait and Tackle Shop, Mr. Ruben Sanchez Jr. Welcome Ruben Sanchez. And um, for those of you all that don't know who Ruben Sanchez is, he is founder of 956 Kayak Anglers and owner of Battleborn Rods. And I'm excited for Ruben to be our first guest because he's going to talk about kayak fishing, how he started the kayak uh, fishing group and uh, a little bit about himself and great tips on kayak fishing. So welcome Mr. Ruben. Hey what's going on Mike man? My pleasure man, to be out here um, sharing some some thoughts and some tips and all this good stuff about fishing man. Awesome Ruben and we're excited to have you here. Um, so I know here in the 956 and around the world the, the kayak fishing is big and here in the valley it's it's just been getting bigger and bigger and I'm gonna be pretty quite frank with everybody and with Ruben himself. I think Ruben has made a big, big impact here in our local community for kayak fishing. Um, he has tons of followers, a beautiful, well-organized fishing group, and you know, it, it's pretty awesome. You know, they they make the events such as tournaments and stuff like that. And um, I have seen the kayak community grow as Ruben has has come up with his group and as the bigger it, it grows, the bigger the, the kayak community has grown here in the 956, you know, I'm not gonna lie about that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know what, Mark, we, we've, ever since I started kayak fishing here in the 956, um, it's, it's been a drastic change since when I started to where it's now and I'm glad that drastic. We, we have a, 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 a Facebook page in which a lot of these, um, you know, uh, beginners or experimented uh, uh, kayakers can go in there and see what's going on. Entonces, uh, we try to keep our page as clean as possible. I mean, you, you're part of it. Este, and we just try to, you know, keep it and maintain it clean so people can actually get something out of the page. And those, that, that's our ambition with that. With, with yeah, that page. I mean, I totally agree. It's, it's, a, it's a very well-respected page. You have a lot of respected uh, and respectful members. Um, and uh, it, it's a wonderful page for those of you all that want to go check it out. Check out 956 Kayak Anglers Fishing Group on uh, Facebook. And it's, it's amazing. You will learn, you will see, and it, it's become, and it's becoming a very big kayak thing here in the RGV in the 956. So Ruben, I have a question for you. What exactly is 956 Kayak Anglers? Mark, well, the 956 Kayak Anglers group started off maybe around, I want to say around 2016, 2017, 17 after I got back from the military. Este, I had fish a quite uh, a few times, but uh, nothing like I, I like kayak fishing, man. What really got it, got me started with the kayak fishing was two things, man. My uncle took me down to Gaiman's Bridge or San Martin Lake, and I actually saw a kayak pass by. And another thing, a very um, drastic incident that could have been avoided if I would have had the, the right people to to tell me what to do and what not to do. And I'm glad that you invited me over, and hopefully some of the stuff that I will say, people will take into consideration before they go out there because it can get really bad and really dangerous in a split second, man. It's the 956 Kayak Anglers. Believe it or not, Mark, and I'm glad that you invited me over because when I got back from the military, one of the few or first pages I actually followed after I started fishing was your page. Awesome. So if, you got, if you're wondering where I got the 956, it's from the 956 Canaleros page. So yeah. there you go. So we started off with the 956. It all ventured off in an incident that I had in San Martin Lake, actually. Okay. Um, I got into a big, big incident in which I didn't know any better about winds. I wouldn't check my plugs. I wouldn't check anything on my kayak. So would you say that you were a beginner kayaker at beginner. the time? Yeah. Okay. I, didn't, I, didn't give a, I didn't give a darn where I was going. I didn't give a darn about winds. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anybody. I okay. didn't even know I needed a fishing license. So I ventured off into San Martin Lake. I will never forget. Este, and if people don't know, we got oysters on each side of the, the sides of San Martin Lake, and you know, I kind of 
went over an oyster bed, I was taken in water, and I got rescued from San Martin Lake. And luckily, you know, I kept myself my cool because I was fresh out of military, you know, they teach you a few things here and there. And I got rescued eventually. That kind of was an eye opener for me to be like, man, man, it could have gone really, man, it, really it, bad. It sounds horrific, man. It sounds. It sounds uh, there's an actual YouTube a video from the firefighters rescuing me from San Martin Lake Marsh. Oh wow! It's, 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 it's crazy because I was there till probably from seven at night till like eleven or twelve, and I kept my position. I sent out my coordinates. Luckily, the Coast Guard didn't have to come by. I told them don't come by. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I'm in a position where I can get rescued. So from maybe them. that's a video link that I can share on uh, LCD 956 Fishing HQ on Facebook, and y'all can check it out if it's okay with Ruben. No, it's, it's, it's good, man. And, it's, and uh, yeah, it's, it's so, an educational video, man, that people need to understand. So they can kind of be videos. aware and, and, and know yeah. what can happen. Yeah. Actually, that was the eye opener, and two or three weeks after that, you know, I sat down with the no kayak because we left the kayak behind. And um, what happened was that um, I said, you know what, man, maybe it would be good to open a kayak page because it could happen to anyone. And that's where it became 956 Kayak Anglers, man. That's where I got everything started. So you kind of wanted to open up a page to help educate others maybe or, or kind of? Well, kind of more like I know there was more experienced kayakers out there and I would want, I, I wanted to for them to have their input in, in, in such page where it was going to get an impact mm -hmm. into people who wanted to start fishing or already fishermen and with their experience can bring them on board and, and, and open up what the kayak community is kind of now, like a man. base uh, kayak page where your beginner fishermen to your or your beginner kayakers to your more experienced can yeah. kind of you know um, be part of it yeah and, I, I, and I learn I, from each other I wanted for our page to break the barrier between the beginners and experimented kayakers uh, mark it's, there's a big barrier between people who have done kayak fishing for many years which is cool man and I admire them. I admire how how much work they put into kayak fishing. So I kind of wanted to uh, break that barrier between them and beginners like me when I started the page. And those is luckily there's great kayakers out there. They're always putting information about what's going on, what's works best for them, sure. and and whatnot. So and those is. Hey, we've been up and running for about maybe in 2016 we've been running the page and you know I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that at least That's people have seven gotten, years more yeah, seven years more so hey, I, I'm hoping that people who have have or are on the page have at least gotten something a tip oh or two you don't them. have to hope man uh, we've we've all witnessed and seen it you know uh, people who have never kayaked we've you know or fishing in general We've seen them come up and, and learn uh, kayak fishing and, and get so into it and, and it's something amazing. So you've been doing something and, good, man. And we usually, we usually, I know there's at times where kayakers, you know, beginning, beginning beginner kayakers, is they have posted on the page, I'm going fishing tomorrow. And then you see 10, 15 people warning him not to go because the winds are going to pick up at a certain time. You might not want to go there. It's going to be like this, so yeah. on and so forth. So that kind of second guesses uh, these kayakers not to go and they think about it twice before they go out there. Oh, and they help them be prepared better next time and yeah, they we, learn from that. And know? we usually let them know uh, and we give them, man, you'll see there. I don't know if you've ever seen Mark, but when somebody, something like that is posted on our page, you'll see 10, 15 guys not bashing the guy more than anything giving them something some, awareness. some educational or some awareness or something that you know hey yeah yeah Ponte, and, yeah and that's you know, amazing get, get on the ball you know because in a split of a second mark it ain't really bad and you can lose your life man so. I, I definitely agree man and uh, a lot of stuff can go wrong with kayak and and whatnot so yeah so you started your page in about 2017 kind of uh trying to get the the kayak community together and have a kind of a base uh, fishing group for everybody to to kind of um yeah like i said get together and and learn new stuff and, and awareness and all that good stuff ruben um real quick what is your oldest i i know we're talking about kayaking but you know what um it's a question that i would like to ask you and as long as my uh, uh, as well as my future guest what is your oldest fishing memory man my oldest fishing memory, bro, man, I probably started off like you did, man. Con un bote. Yeah. Off of the, the 
los canales o los cuates, ¿cómo se llama? Los cuates, are you talking about the cuates in Hidalgo or no, the cuates in Mission, here in, in, in Mission, Mission and, and Where Road, uh, Benson Road go. and all that? that one. Yeah, los cuates, canal right los there, cuates. Right That's there. where we used to go when I was right a kid. There. I'm, I'm actually from Mission, so, you know, Alton is right there. And I'm from, I'm from, uh, I'm from North McAllen Mission area, so okay. yeah, we would uh, the canals literally are like not even a quarter mile from where bueno, I grew up. Yo iba, I would, I would, my uncle, uh, my two uncles actually uh, were the first guys that introduced me to fishing, man. Your uncles? Yeah, my okay. uncles. Uh, one of them, he doesn't fish as much anymore, but el otro sí, the other one does fish a lot. But one of them, you know, we wouldn't have any money. You know how that was, Mark. Definitely, you know, we, we grew up in. We grew up in a in, in a in a world of you know making the best of what you got you know and definitely we didn't have I can much. definitely relate we, yes. we didn't have much back in the day entonces we would use botes you know mm -hmm. cans yeah yeah con el hilo and our weights would be los los nuts oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you know we, we would go down to the uh, los cuates sure we bro I didn't even know what kind of species were in there man. <laughs> we were just out there to have some fun but I'll tell you I tell you this much man I go back to those memories. Now, I'd probably be saying that those are the best memories I have, man, because that's where I started. Exactly. And I didn't start fishing hardcore till then, man. I didn't I didn't start fishing then. I started fishing hardcore after I got back from the military. So around 2016, 2016 17? 2016, that's when my uncle took me on his boat. Um, it's only his uh, hearing me, uh, Manuel, Manuel, Meme, mi tío Meme. Meme. Uh, he Big took shout me, out to he, Manuel Meme. He took me out on a boat for the first time, and um, you wouldn't give him $100 if you see his boat. But <laughs> it would take you from point A to point B, which... And back to that, point A. <laughs> that's all that mattered. Entonces, he was the one who introduced me to fishing. Mark. So, how were y'all fishing? Or what Mark, were y'all fishing for? We, we were fishing for... Mark, the first time I went to... Um, he took me to Arroyo. I didn't know any better. I didn't know what I was fishing for. Uh -huh. Believe it or not, uh, I was... Bien verde, real green. Yes, yes. Funny story, bro. I went to academy to go. I didn't know any better, Mark. You're not gonna laugh about me, but I didn't know any better, bro. I get into academy and I ask him for a rod and reel. Sure. What are you fishing for, bro? Uh, sir? No, pues, pues, no sé, sir. I'm going to Arroyo. I ended up buying a 8,000 reel. <laughs> and, pues, hey, what kind of rod do I need for this damn thing? No, pues, I don't know, sir. What are you gonna go catch? Sharks or what? And now that I look back, the guy was making fun of me. Porque me dijo, hey, we're going to go catch sharks or what? Anyways, short, uh, story short, my, my uncle introduced me to fishing. We went for redfish. He would do bottom rig. He would we take out bait, cut mullet. That's how I started fishing. Um, he eventually started picking up. Yeah, me fui, me fui, me fui, me fui. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> now um, you don't, I don't think I've ever seen Ruben uh, chunk bait. Um, it's all about lure fishing, finesse fishing, uh, <laughs> light action tackle and and all that good stuff so yeah so uh yeah man that's 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 the beautiful thing about fishing and that's what i've shared you know when when you didn't have much and you made the best out of what you had and and you know fishing the canal is you know fishing the canals here in the rgv just like everybody a lot of people have us as, as uh, hispanics and people that really didn't have much or a lot of money you know we fished the canals and um so he comes back from the military he goes fishing with his uncle out there in a royal city and um at this time he's He's starting the 956 Kayak Anglers uh, group on Facebook. Ruben, what was the first kayak you had? Oof, it was, um, era una, como se llamaba? Chinguentes. Ocean Kayak, no, it was Pelican. An ocean. It was, a, it was, and I do remember it was a 14 footer, a field and stream. Field and stream. Like I said, Mark, I didn't know any better, uh -huh. but this thing was long as hell. <laughs> And it was, I imagine it wasn't you, sturdy. It wasn't as sturdy as, it, <laughs> as, as I thought it would be. So you would have to be, Chinguentes, you got to have to be real careful when you would chunk the bait because that's how I started when I first got on my yeah. kayak, chunk, chunky bait. And those says you would have to be real careful whenever you would swing your rod or swing the other way, you have to be real careful. And those says that was my actual first kayak. And the reason why I bought it is because my uncle took me to San Martin Lake and I saw a kayak pass by. I said, man, that must be fun to do. Two, three weeks passed by and ended up buying the field of stream from a friend that sold it to me for 400 bucks out of Brownsville, Texas, man. And I still know his name, and that's how it started. They, I bought the wheels. I got really excited about it. Hombre, I rigged it up real nice. Yo con luces y todo lights. And, you oh, know, wow. I rigged that thing up really nice. Little did I know that it was just more than a kayak, you know, with the weather, winds, and you know, That's how I ended up uh, getting rescued from San Martín. <laughs> oh, so you, so you bought yourself the kayak. 
and then the group came as as you um, as you experienced that with as you experienced that um, that time that, that you had that accident in the kayak. The group came 956 Kayak Fishing Anglers, right? 956 Kayak Anglers, Mark. 956 Kayak yeah. Anglers. Yeah. So Ruben opens up 956 Kayak Anglers, and um, Los Canaleros in 956. I remember it was um, it was already up and running at the time, and I remember the fishing pages that were around, and I don't remember anybody opening up a kayak fishing page, and um, you know until I saw 956 Kayak Anglers. Uh, and I got to meet Ruben. I think I've known Ruben for <sighs> how long have I known you for, Ruben? I went to your store, Mark, and I don't know if you remember me. I went to your store when you had it over there. Mira, ni una tienda, estabas en una casa. Behind my mom's house when I started the store. <laughs> you had a big old tank, right? <laughs> yeah, I had a tank I right where I used went, to hold up. I went in there. Like, I, I don't remember what I went into your store for. It's been about four or five years. And I, I remember you because I was like, this is because I remember about the page. That's sure. actually how I met you. You probably don't remember me, but I went in there and went and bought some stuff. Y me fui, pero yo me acuerdo cuando I remember you had your store there. So it's been a long time, and I've been watching your, your progress with your stores that you've been coming along. And it's really, really cool to see somebody, your neighboring partner, Having a great, having great success for like you, man. Yeah, likewise, man. Yeah. Likewise, and that's why it's an honor to have you here because um, Ruben is Ruben is is a very um, he, he's he's an entrepreneur. He has passion for the sport. He has love for the sport, and he's helped out a lot in the fishing community. You know, the, he's done great tournaments with with the fishing page, and and um, it's awesome, man. And and. He started his own business with the Battleborn Rods, and we have been, those of y'all that are here from the RGV 956, we have seen it explode, you know, and, and explode in the way that tons of these rods are being used and, and bought from him, and uh, it's it's great stuff that 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 um, that happens here with Ruben, and, and it encourages even myself and, and a lot of other people out there, you know, it, yeah. it's a great encouragement for all of us. And it's amazing, man. And that's why it's an honor to have Ruben Sanchez. And, and the first person that I thought about is, you know what? I want to get Ruben in. I want to interview him about how he got started because we kind of share similarities and, and stories and stuff like that. And um, and it's amazing, man. It's, it's an honor. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's, I've seen you. We've, we've came along uh, quite some bit. You've been longer than I have. Este, but I always try and I always said this. I always try to, I'm always a big uh, small business um, supporter, man. Yes, sir. Likewise. I, I have a shirt, Tuya Mark, uh -huh. that probably when you start, when I, when I first met you or back in the day, uh -huh. and that I have Tuya, and I actually have it, most of my shirts from local support or local shops or local guys, I have them up on my, my shop. Entonces, if you ever have a chance, go to my shop and you'll see your shirt. Yeah, yeah it's something that I, that I must have to. You to must. You probably out. have. I probably have that shirt there ever since I started rod building, bro. <laughs> este, pero yeah, I'm, I'm very blessed, bro. To be honest, Mark, to have such a great group. Yes. And I won't say myself that I built this group, man. It's. It's. I always say it's the group who makes the page, man. Yeah. I'm just there running it, making sure everything's cool. No me creo más ni menos que nadie. And you've seen the tournaments, man. And, and I have you here, Mark. You know, I've, I've never had a chance to tell you thank you because year after year, bro, you're one of our first ones to say, Ruben, put me on the put me on the banner. Definitely, man. man. No, no, I, no, need, no need to thank you, Ruben. Um, I, I'm in the same situation as you, and I'm a big supporter of yeah. people like yourself, especially a Facebook group that does these local fishing tournaments because I do it myself and I know how it is to organize such an event yeah. and I know it's such a beautiful thing that, that we get to do something when nobody else is, is pretty much putting these things together. Yes, you have your big saltwater tournaments with the boats and the, you know, these high-end anglers and whatnot, but... You know, you don't you don't have anyone trying to do an alligator guard fishing tournament and a kayak fishing tournament here in the valley and, and Ruben is one of those guys and, and and I I'm very appreciative for the fishing community that we have someone like him to be able to put these events together, man. And, and you know what the you know what I've noticed, Mark, we've been doing this was our fifth annual kayak tournament that just 
uh, we just did in October. Yeah, I remember. And I I also admire because you have to put, I admire you for putting up your tournaments. People don't understand how much work it is to put a tournament on. Um, it's like you say, man, we have these big, great, awesome tournaments, uh, boat tournaments, and I'm one of them. I, I do these tournaments. Sure. You know, when I go to these tournaments and I see them, and I'm like, God, man, man, these are great tournaments. Maybe one day I'll be there. Definitely. But, you know, it's it's always also cool to to have your tent up like you do yours, mm -hmm. have the people swing by. Y la mera verdad, bro, it's nothing but raza. Exactly. Pura raza. For those, for, well, my definition of raza is your local, uh, your local community. Your local your, your community. Na your neighbors, your friends, you know. Your friends, yeah. those guys that follow you. The people who support yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, those guys that support you from, 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 from day one, bro. <laughs> the, the, the guys that are there, you know, pushing your page, pushing uh -huh. whatever you're doing, bro. They're pushing Everybody you from the better. person who's uh, volunteering to... To the sponsor, to the person who's who's bought themselves an entry to the tournament, everybody uh, in my book is considered raza. Man. Yeah, no, no, beautiful it, thing. Yeah, I, I say raza. It's those that you know cover you, bro. Exactly. It, those that are around you all the time, and and you know, like I say, we, this year we had every year mark this the tournament that we have here in the kayak tournament, and I don't know, maybe that's why it, we have seen it increasing by, by, by tournament by year by year I'm sorry it's the it's a hundred percent payout bro we don't we don't take any sure. from these tournaments and those is it encourages people to come by man yeah. those is the and we started off with 35 people when we started the tournament and we just did it in a, in, in, in a, <laughs> on the shoreline from oh, 110 uh -huh. We had 35 people show up, then eventually picked up, and it has never dropped from 65 ever since. So I see you make them in uh, South Padre Island, right? Now we do them in South Padre Island, man. We're so blessed that every year people like you, Mark, uh -huh. uh, sponsor us with monetary, uh, uh, con dinero, with yeah, money, monetary man. donations. Well, and all these monetary donations, bro, uh, I keep accountability with my admins. We got other four admins, which a big shout out to them because they put up with a lot of stuff. What are the name of your administrators before hey, we continue? Rolando, uh -huh. we have Rolando, and we have Luis, and we have a guy named Mark. Okay. Uh, man, big shout out to those guys. Also, without having me to pay them or anything, bro, they do as much work as I That's do. Beautiful, man. Man. It's beautiful. It's crazy. A big shout out to them. It's the but, um, man. Our, we, we 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 now we kind of upgraded from the bank to an actual uh, restaurant. Uh, pero. It, it comes. It, I always say this, with, and I, you you see me on my post mark. Uh -huh. without, without the sponsors, nothing could have been Definitely. possible. And those is we pick up these monetary donations from 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 these sponsors, and we go pay the venue. Yes, of course. And I've made friends with the venue, the owner of the venue, in which they give us a good price, and they they, they nos dan us burgers y todo. Yeah, man, I know exactly what what it takes, and. And um, how appreciative we are with with everybody that comes together and helps support these great events, man! It's it's awesome. We, we couldn't had, do it. We had the... sixty two kayakers show up. This sixty five guys show up this last tournament. month. Last month, uh -huh. like, este nombre bien padre. Este next year I'll probably take video, man. I have somebody take video of, of what we do there. Uh, I'm so busy, so the last thing in my head is trying to take video pictures of what's going on in the sure, tournament sure. or through the public ceremony or whatever we do. But I encourage you guys, man, to show up and next year. We have them. We also have online tournaments. You're on the page. Awesome, brother. So, yeah, uh, Ruben Sanchez, um, founder of 956 Kayak Anglers. He started the group. He's made some great events for the fishing community, um, brought a lot of people together. And not only that, you know, help, help build a big kayak fishing group community here in the 956 along with a lot of other people who are in, are in his group and and um, that's awesome Ruben and your tournament so when's your next tournament hey we're actually in we're thinking about doing an online tournament online okay. tournament either December or January a uh, online tournaments work different from actual an actual annual tournament is the pedal we only do one annual tournament every year mark and I've had people ask me Ruben do another one do another one it's just I don't want to burn my sponsors. 
I got you, and I feel you. <laughs> they, they, I don't, I, the, the biggest thing here is my sponsors, our sponsors. Yeah. I should say our sponsors. Entonces, they got a lot of stuff going on. I got a lot of stuff going on, and honestly, it's it's great having tournaments, Mark. But the day the tournament is over at six or seven p.m., I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm ready. Oh yeah. And the thing is that I have my family involved in it too, you know. Mm -hmm. So I take my kids, you throw the pedal, and those just. They're out there helping me, bro. I get, and I'm glad I have volunteers come up and say, Ruben, I'll be the way master. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Ruben, I'll take pictures. This year was the most organized tournament we've had so far in, 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 in the, since we started. I had a guy taking pictures, Mark. I had a way master. Well, he's not a way master, but he volunteered to do it. I had somebody writing everything down. Nobody. Yeah, I had somebody else giving a lot more organized more organized yeah. uh, hopefully as years go by mark we get bigger we get more better sponsors in which uh, uh we can make this even a bigger bigger event yes thing and like we said man we we, we don't take a single penny from these events. that's awesome man so your your next tournament that you're saying it's an online tournament can anybody and fish anywhere join Yes. What if you get somebody from a whole different state? That, that's no problem as long as it's salt water. As long as it's salt water. As so, as so um, that being said, we invite you all to join 956 Kayak Anglers and, st and, and stay tuned because we um, we are going to have a online tournament. Ruben is going to have an online tournament there. So if you want to join from your hometown, you know, it's going to be all virtual. You'd be surprised how many people we have that are not from the 956. If you guys don't know what 956, that's our area code here in, in South Texas. Sure. And those is, we don't just have 956 people. We got people for this tournament that we just did. People from Corpus, San Antonio, outside of Mata Gorda came by because they came by and told me about them. And those is, don't be scared, man. Join the page. Eh, hop on one of our online tournaments. That'd be awesome. It's, 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 it's a great event. Eh, we battle it out. I even do it. So Awesome. That's, 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 we that's go awesome. at it. We go at it. It's very, very competitive, and there's a lot of trash talking. So, babe, if you're, if you're going to do a tournament, be ready for that trash talk, man. <laughs> that's amazing, everybody. So you heard it from Ruben. And again, once again, join his join his fishing group and and uh, stay on the lookout for the next uh, online tournament if you're interested on on joining that online tournament from your own hometown so Ruben so you know you have an awesome fishing uh, group 956 kayak anglers um, a lot of a lot of anglers um, when did you start battleborn rods oof mark man it goes it goes back some years and every time, it's a touchy subject for me, Mark, man. Sure. Uh, people don't know what really, really battleborne rods is, man. It's it's a combination of two things. A uh, combination of uh, my time in the military. That's sure. why it's called battleborne. Um, and another thing is that um, a, a lot of people don't know is my name or the name of my small business uh, is a stronghold of who my mother was. Okay. Uh, my mother, uh, she's no longer with me. So how this started off, bro, is in 2020, I had a big back surgery. I was a paratrooper in the military. Sure. Uh, for those that don't know, I used to jump out of planes. So I ended up going through a big back surgery in 2020, and I was left with, uh, Ruben, your recovery time is going to be about a year. Holy crap. My mom was getting sick in that time. She was already sick. She had diabetes. She was already in her last stages. She didn't want to do um, um, como se llama? dialysis. So, you know, she was being taken care of by me, my home. And those is, I, I, I had a, I had a, a, a rod building kit. I had a rod building kit. Uh -huh. And initially, I was just only going to fix all my guides because I had 20 rods there that every time a guide would break, I'd just go buy another rod. Yeah. I said, man, forget the fixing. So anyways, I had so much time in my hands that I said, you know what, I'm gonna start fixing these guys. I had the kit there marked for about six months. Without Never. even opening it or nada, touching it? Nada, nada, nada. And uh, my mom, back in the day, she would want to sit in the garage and look outside the garage door because before I didn't, have, uh, yeah. I didn't have anything on there. So you know what, entre plática y plática, talking with my mom, she's like, well, I start getting off out the, the rod building kit mark. Boom, I started off with one rod, which I don't know if if, if, it, if this podcast gets out there, man, I want to buy that rod back. But I don't know if I ever find I would ever find that rod again. All right. So so this is a very interesting story, and we are gonna continue right now momentarily, right here where we just left off. 
and I'm, I'm eager to know about this rod and um, and uh, how it started with with um, the respect of his mom and all that so give us a little break everybody and we're gonna get back with the story of how Battleborn Rods got started and after that we're gonna talk about kayak fishing to end the episode so stay tuned Alright everyone, so we are back to LCD 956 Fishing HQ and uh, we have Ruben here. And just before our break, Ruben was telling us about how he started Battleborn Rods and how he started building his first rod in, in his garage and talking to us about his his mom. And um, he was talking about a rod that he built that he, sh that he would love to be able to encounter it. Uh, he doesn't remember who, or who bought it for, he doesn't remember the person that went and bought it from him, but we'll let him tell the story where he left off. So Ruben, you were, you had a kit, yep. you had not opened it, Nope. So you started by fixing your own guides. I, well, I never actually fixed the guide, Mark. No? No. I never actually fixed the, fixed the guide because the kit, back in the day, uh, the company that would send out the kit, they had a little promotion going on. Uh -huh. So you buy the kit, you te mandan todo, they would send you everything. So they wouldn't send you a blank. So I was like, damn. Well, might as well build the whole rod. Yeah. You know, instead of fixing the guys. So I never fixed the guides. I ended up throwing all those damn things and I ended up building my first rod. So you jumped straight to building the rod. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, without even a, a lot of questions. The first question a lot of people ask me is, how did you start uh, bu ro building rods? Uh -huh. I'm self taught. Yeah. I never went to a class. I never went anywhere. Nada. Lo poquito que sé es what I've learned throughout the, the years that I've been uh, rod building. Entonces, Hey, well, my mom was already in her last stage of um, diabetes, right? Diabetes. And she, you say that she would uh, be chilling in the garage, she would looking be, out yeah, the she window. Would, yeah, she wouldn't like going into. She would like being in my inside the home, but she would uh -huh. like because she would like going in the garage because she could. My, my, my garage door was pretty big, so I'd open the door and she liked seeing outside. Yes. Entonces, este, she started seeing me building a rod, and um, eh, I built my first rod and I sold it. You know, and then I would bring my mom back out, and I would build a I build a second rod. Yeah, and boom, I sold it. And that's where my mom, if if you, my mom was um, como le dijimos nosotros aquí en Market era pulguera. She would sell in the flea markets. Yeah, she would sell entrepreneur, entrepreneur yeah. on the down low. Yeah, como nosotros los mexicanos, yeah. pues tratando de salir adelante, you know, and we would sell anything plates. that she find a way to she, make money. She would make, make money, money yeah, selling right. stuff, selling and, and stuff, and collecting and selling yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, and entonces she would flip, flip stuff. Yeah, and um, I remember exactly the words she told me. I was like, man, Ruben, you're just like me. Have you ever thought maybe of just uh, building rods and selling rods? And I was like, mom, you know what? I never thought about that. Mark, the day I decided to do the business, the Battleborn, the, the, the Battleborn, the actual Battleborn, and going and getting my tax ID. That day, bro, my mom, a uh, few months before that, passed away in May. Uh -huh. uh, May fifth, actually, she passed away in my on my birthday, May twenty four. I was putting my mom este abajo, and I promised myself, Mark, that I was gonna make this work. And I was gonna register my name the way she would want to, and I did. When I got the yes. paperwork marked, man, I broke down and I cried. I was like, Man. And it's the, that's how I started, bro. That's how that's how Battleborn started. So every rod that I built, bro, hey, Mark, hey, Chin went this. I mean, I don't know if you see, you've seen my work. Entonces, oh, le, yes, le, yes. le dedico mucho tiempo. I, I dedicate everything to these rods yeah and it's just more than a rod to me bro it's more like a i go i zone out doing this stuff man and i yeah like i mentioned before you know before his battleborn rods it's 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 a pretty well-known company and it became well known very fast and uh with all the respect to all the other rod builders in the 956 in, in our local community um ruben has done a wonderful thing with with this business of his and his craftsmanship I got to say is one of the best man, that I've seen. At Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Anywhere, you, anywhere local or anywhere even in the state, man. And I get, I get, I get, I started getting really creative, Mark, man. I, 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 I'm trying to break barriers and just trying to just take the next step. I never see anyone or anybody as competitiveness 
And if there's anything, man, I have people reach out to me, Ruben, how did you do this? Last night I was go I went live uh -huh. for about maybe three hours showing people I'm working on a rattlesnake skin rod. Yeah, I've seen it. And yeah. I was there live three hours showing people how to uh, put the skin on the rods. And so it's something that I hopefully, uh, if, if anything, it can educate some people on certain things that there is more things to be to do out there, man. If you, if you put it in your mind and, and you sit down and, and hustle, like I've seen you hustle mark and those is everything's possible bro. exactly man and and uh i i thought it was a uh, proper to bring up his his battleborn rods because there's an amazing story that a lot of us have um heard not completely because um i just you know he just shared that with us right here but not only that but his product his rods are amazing man the, the, like i said the craftsmanship you get so into them and i know how time consuming that can be yeah and my hat's off to you because no, it's, the, it's, it's, it's time, man. It, it, it's time consuming. And, and yesterday you call me, Mark, and you're like, Ruben, I know you're super busy. Mark, I was actually building a rod at that I time. Knew, I knew you probably I was, were. I was in the shop and I was, man, and, and this, and I was earlier this morning. I was like, man, I told my, my, my working partner, Jake. I was like, Jake, man, I got to meet with, with Mark at Ford, bro. I need to take off. And I was still epoxying rods. And I was like, dude, I need, I need to get out of here. Boom, even if we... But most of my time, Mark, is, is, is I, I, we start working from nine. And, bro, yesterday I finished my live till like probably 12 or 1 in the morning. That's... And I was already up again this morning at 7. Yeah, man, you, you, you're doing it and um, that's what it takes. You got to work hard and you got to yeah. you gotta really love what you do. You got to put the time in, man. You got to put the time in. A lot of people think it's all, uh, they're coming, they're, they're falling from the sky. And if you don't put the time, the effort uh, into, and I'm pretty sure you're the same way, Mark, with your store, man. I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure you're here uh, more hours than what you have to be in here for. Oh, man. definitely. Yeah. Those is, we, we work, we, we don't have... Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you take 10 minute uh, lunch breaks. Yeah. And if and maybe that's a lot. And, yeah, and sometimes you don't even get a chance to, to eat or it's like a, it's something that happens a lot. I can probably have a slow day at the store yeah. where customers don't come in and you know, I get a little chance to get some lunch. As soon as I'm eating that lunch, I get people walking yeah, in, the walk in the store. So I'm eating my lunch code, and I got used to it. But at the end of the day, it's a beautiful thing, man. Because, no, no, you, you, you get know? to help a lot of people, man. Yeah. I, I, and I always tell people when they ask me questions, they're real because they see my TikTok videos or whatever, whatever I post on there, my, my videos going to pescando. Ruben, what do you recommend me about blah, 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 blah. Bro, I'm not an expert. This is just what works for me. Sure. Don't, don't, don't. Exactly. Don't think that's, that's, that it's going to work for you. You got to put, exactly what I and tell I them. tell them, you got to put the time in. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I can show you what I use and where I'm at, but if you don't put the time in, you're never gonna be successful Successful at fishing. You gotta put the time in, man. I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna tell you the same yeah. thing or no, Mark. No, definitely. In order to be a successful fisherman, you gotta put the time in. You have period. to. Period. You have to, you have to you invest know? that time. So yeah, man, so so let's get back to the, to the subject about kayak. Ruben, when, so I know, I've seen your kayaks, you know, yep. obviously I don't see, I didn't see the first kayak you had. You had um, some pretty nice Hobie kayaks. When did you decide to get a, to get a more, uh, a more sophisticated, a better kayak well, after that? Mark, uh, one time I went on my field and stream to San Martin Lake uh -huh. and I was bringing down my kayak and as I'm bringing down my kayak on the boat ramp, I see somebody just flying through me. I was like, gliding, gliding. I was like, what the heck is that? So I'm staring at this guy and he's gliding through the water. I waited, could you not, Mark, for him to come back. Oh, wow. To ask him what kind of kayak it was. And he told me, Ruben, it's a Hobie Pro Anchor. I was like, all right. I said, pues cuánto puede costar un Pro Anchor? <laughs> Bro. Little did I know that these kayaks are expensive. The more sophisticated of a kayak you want, the more expensive they get. I ended up saving my money, saving my money, blah, 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 until I got a pro angler. Well, I ended up fishing with the pro angler, but as time went by, my back and my knees weren't as good as they were before. I ended up upgrading, or I don't know if it's upgrading or downgrading, whatever people want to take it down to. But I ended up getting a Hobie Outback. Why well, call it upgrading if it helped you? Well, yeah. Well, to me it was an upgrade. But I, I, I've had. I know what you mean. I've had, I've had talks with other guys that have told me, Ruben, well, why'd you, why did you go down to a, a yeah, cheaper kayak? Yeah, because the prongers are more expensive yeah, the and, and they're are a little more heavy duty, more heavy duty, more of a more tank, more, more of a tank, but, but more space. heavier. 
Are they heavy? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> pro anglers are heavier, bro. Uh, without a doubt, pro anglers is one of the heaviest kayaks out there, at least he solo without so, any mounts or anything on it, bro. So comfortably, in order to be able to be with a, with a, with a pro angler, probably best with a, tra a trailer, right? Yes, with the trailer, but what I've seen most on uh, is, is people who do bass fishing mm -hmm. take up mostly on, on pro anglers. Uh, as time went by, I started realizing that my type of fishing was shallow waters. Okay. Some, some, if I have to say something about a pro angler is that you can't really take a pro angler in shallow waters. And, and I you can, can, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this much. You're going to be pushing and, 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 and pulling that kite out from wherever the heck you are. Entonces, with the now back, uh, it's a little bit more accessible, more easier, less weight, and you can actually... The lightness is probably what's yeah. going to help you the most. Yeah. And if, if you ask me, Mark... A, I'm usually fishing uh, a foot of water. That's how shallow I fish. Awesome. And those is my type of fishing. For my type of fishing, Hobie Outback to me, it's one of the best kayaks out there. Man. So Ruben, let's say uh, somebody's trying to buy their first kayak. Okay. You know, and they're not sure how to go about buying their first kayak. What would you suggest for them? It's the woof. Uh, They're since, on your group. They see they, they they saw that kayak gliding through through the water through just the water, like you, yeah. and, and they want to get into it. So the first, what, the what, first, what should they do? The first thing we I actually because I have a lot of people. I don't know. They think I'm a kayak guru or something, and I'm not. <laughs> I just give them my my opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, to the best of my knowledge or to my experience, the first thing I tell them: What's your budget? That's 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 the first thing. I think that's What's very your important. budget? I don't want to throw somebody on a Hobie Outback when they can't really afford it because kayaks can be expensive, Mark. Yes, sir. And entonces lo que hago is what I usually do is ask them, "What's your budget, bro?" No, for six, seven hundred dollars, Mark. The first thing I also tell them, you might want to go on that Facebook Marketplace and you'll find some great kayaks. They don't have to be Hobies. They don't have to be a, an expensive kayak. You always start with a good starter kayak. Yeah. You got your Pelicans, you got your Ascend, you got your Old Towns, you got a whole bunch of kayaks. They're not as expensive as, a, uh, as Hobies, and they do they get the job done. And those is a, my first thing I tell the kayakers, what's your budget? Look for something on the Facebook Marketplace, a starter kayak. I would always suggest, I always tell them, get a 12-footer, man. Get a 12-foot kayak in which uh, you can uh, maneuver around a kayak. Este, what are your capabilities? Are fishing are you a starter what's going on okay, where do you want to go what type of fishing are you doing those are the type of questions and stuff that you need to take into consideration before buying it and i'm sure people have asked you this question no, always, many times <laughs> many times they come up to me ruben what do you think what yeah. do you think i should buy it because i think I, at one point i was shopping around for kayaks I, I asked ruben for some advice i was shopping for a kayak i think i did want to get a hobby at the time but you know, um, I wasn't too educated on Hobie kayaks, and I reached out to Ruben and I asked him, and um, I'm sure a lot of people did too. No, a lot of people asked me about uh, asked me about kayaks, and I give them my honest opinion. They don't just because I have one don't mean you don't have, you have to get one. Eventually, you get there. You, I started off with the Field and Street Mark, and I couldn't resell it because obviously you just stayed behind. But I ended up saving and saving and saving and started working my way up there until I got a, a Hobie and those just um people people are gonna have their own opinions and this is just for my experience is what i like and that's what i fish better with and that's what i tell people man yeah yeah definitely so so people you know they're starting they they want um, a kayak and you know budget should be something they should consider strongly because obviously you're not going to be able to maybe get yourself the high-end kayak that you really want but depending on your budget, maybe you can shop around for one on, on Facebook Market or anywhere that they might sell a used kayak and stuff like that. So they buy their kayak. They're not, they're fresh. They're barely trying to get into the water. Okay. So what, what should you recommend those people maybe on awareness, on safety, on uh, their first times trying to learn how to use the kayak in any open water? Open waters, man, Mark. The first thing I tell kayakers, beginners, bro. The first time, the first thing I tell beginners because I get this question a lot. Ruben, where should I go fishing? 
Este, first of all, you gotta think about safety. Safety first, and that's something I have in my mind because of the military, man. Safety yes. first, safety first, safety first. You should consider first getting all your safety gear, which is your whistle, your life jacket. Remember, your life jacket has to be something que te va a sostener. You know, before I got mine, I actually went on a pool and tried them out. Before, yeah. you know, I want to make sure that I feel good with it. A sustainable, a life, sustainable jacket. life jacket. Now you got your whistle. I got I got a knife with me just in case. Este, I'll stop you right there. Why a knife? Um, I don't know. Excuse Maybe me. because of the military experience, you know, a knife can always come yes. in handy for anything. Knife, knives can come in handy <laughs> in any way possible, Mark. Uh, this, bro. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get yourself. Not that a knife is going to be anything, you know, uh, whatever. You bro. never know. What if you get, like, for example, I've always pictured this, and I've yeah. always, that's why I asked you about a knife. I pictured this. Man, how do these people go fishing on a kayak with waders on, and they're going through the channel? What's gonna happen if they flip that kayak? That's exactly what I. That's exactly you know, like, why I carry so mine. So I was like, if I had a knife, if I was nope. doing what they're doing, yep. I would definitely yep. carry a knife, and I would cut open that yep. thing yep. as soon as I hit water. And cut open my 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 uh, waders. You just made a good point, Mark, because now that winter is coming about, yeah. I use my waders on my kayak. Yes, it is very dangerous, and it is not. Something you want to be doing out there in case something happens. Especially but, somebody that's not experienced. Yeah, but... Or has that awareness. Yeah, but now, before you go out fishing, I mean, that's one thing. We go back to the beginners. I tell them, check your winds, buddy. Hey, check your winds. Yeah, conditions. You want to go with somebody that at least you can be... See, something algo te pasa, something happens. You got them to be aware of your, your, your situation or whatever. You might want to have your phone right on standby, it's the, your paddles, everything, bro, man. Your, all your PPE, your protective on the link, equipment. Everything, PPE, it's the Chinguente. You can have your radio, radios. Uh, there's nothing I can uh, stress enough that it is safety first before anything, bro. Uh, and I've always said, now I always have people, Ruben, who think the wind's going to be good tomorrow, and I check. 12, 13, 14, you're pushing it, depending on what areas you're going to. If you're not experimented uh, uh, in certain areas, wind can blow you and flip you very fast, Mark. Entonces, uh, the first thing I tell the people is winds, man, check your winds, check your winds. It is not, it is, it is, it is re not recommended to go out there when winds are blowing pretty hard. So yeah, so that's a good point, Ruben. You know, have, have your protective equipment at all times. Um, a life jacket, a sustainable life jacket, your whistle in case you might have to, um, uh, you know, whistle somebody down or, or stuff like yeah. that, lights, uh, a handy knife. You don't know. ever go alone. Don't ever go alone. So I would say maybe if it's your first time, try to link up with somebody that's a little and, more experienced. And, and usually, Mark, we, our group is, that's the main reason why also a lot of these beginners they usually post up on our page, anybody going out tomorrow, anybody going so out they, tomorrow. So they can kind of show them the ropes. They they, they kind yeah. of link up as they, and they get together and they go out kayak fishing, which is the best way. And I'm glad every time I see a post like that on our page and I see people linking up to go fishing, Mark, it makes me wonder, you know, maybe I, I saved somebody's life by having this page on here, definitely. man. Definitely, no, definitely. Right? Definitely. And, and I, I, in my back of my head, and, you know, maybe it doesn't, happen to everyone but in back of my head i'm thinking in my to myself man maybe maybe today or tomorrow that helps somebody's life man, yeah you know save a life and and that's what the page is all about man everybody kind of links up in there and, and go fishing and whatnot that, yeah he doesn't say that that's it that's that's a good point right there so so yeah you know you, you're buying your first kayak you know you get something around your budget now you, you got to see what equipment you need of course you need your protective equipment that is going to be very important just like Ruben says, check the conditions. Um, always have always have your protective equipment. And that's a great point. If your local fishing community, yeah. your local kayak fishing uh, uh, Facebook community has a group, post on there. Link up with somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I've made a lot of good friends to this day um, in the Facebook fishing communities. Yeah, most of my the most of my friends. And I'd be lying, Mark, if, if I say I learned everything myself, man. Everything that I've known from fishing, bro, has came from kayak anglers, bro. Yeah. Everything that I know to this day 
is from kayak anglers. Yeah, and it's very from the kayak page. Yeah, and yeah. it's very important, man. I learn from others. Learn from others. It does not make you stupid wanting to learn. You know, and the best way to learn is is hands on with somebody else. There's no such thing as a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question, and and it's very important. You know, you love the sport learn everything absorb everything that you can from everybody um, don't ever think um, you know it all because there's a lot of stuff you can learn from somebody that's not even probably close as experienced as you consider yourself because it's happened to me you know somebody walks into the store and they start talking about fishing and they said that they caught a fish this way I'm learning and I'm absorbing yeah. because that's the type of person I am and that's what that's how we should be because um, it's amazing the stuff that we can learn from one another and, and stuff like that so yeah so people buy their first kayak they're out there they're learning they're they're linking up with people making friends building relationships in the fishing community and um, yeah I thought that was a very important subject for people that are thinking about now your kayak. waters are you gonna be fishing on too, mark I mean if you're a beginner stay I would try and keep closer to the shorelines at the beginning you know make sure you, you kind of what I would do if I was when I started and I bought my Hobie Outback, I kind of sat on it and make sure my capabilities were how far I can go mm -hmm. and slowly, slowly start increasing your 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 areas. Once you start becoming a little bit more experienced, uh, know what you can do and what cannot do, how are the winds looking like, you start getting ready. And I never thought about this, Mark, but when I started kayak fishing, I'd be like, man, dude, kayak fishing doesn't have to get this technical. And you know what, bro, seven years in, there is a lot of stuff that you need to know before you go out and kayak fish. That's a great point, man. If you're fishing, let's say, in, in, in a beach or something or, you know, an ocean, he has a great point. Fish close to your shorelines because obviously, God forbid something happens, you're close to the shoreline where it's probably going to be shallow yeah. and you can easily just walk, walk to the shoreline and, now, you, I, know, I, you know, save yourself. Now, and, 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 and you need to understand... For example, we got good areas here in the valley that you can kayak fish. It's not the same kayak fishing in South Padre Island, Mark, than it is in Arroyo, than it is in Port Mansfield or Corpus. Every area is different. Now, you go to South, uh, South Padre Island, bro, you got those channels. Very dangerous channels, bro. The winds might be blow not be blowing much, but those channels have a lot current. of current and water going through. The last thing you want to be is caught in one of those currents thinking that you know it all and those channels are deep and yeah. they're going to drag you along until they take you out. And so this, what I say is always have somebody that is more experienced than you that can show you the area and that's how I learned. And I'm not saying I know all the areas, but most of the areas that I go, I've been there many times into where I know where I got to go. Where can I go? Where should I jump on that kayak? how fast I got across into a, from a channel to another. I mean, it's just, a, as, as you go, Mark, more years of experience, este, vas aprendiendo, you start learning and these, all these stuff on a kayak. Yeah, so so kayak safety is very important that, that you all should, that we sh all should consider and take seriously because um, it, it can become dangerous, you know. You're, you're playing with mother nature and and that's something that you gotta take serious. You do not wanna mess around, play you're around. Never, you're never gonna win. Never. You're never gonna win. You're never gonna predict. Yeah, and, and I always tell kayakers, man, um, there's another day. The, the ocean and the water are never leaving. Mm -hmm. Just, it's, screw it's, the, it's, screw, it's not worth it. It's not yeah, worth it. Yeah, screw trying to catch that fish. And it's not worth it, man. I, I've been like that. Around. At, <laughs> I've been like that at times where before I was like that, you know, but now as time has gone by, I always tell myself, I look at the winds, I say, Mm, it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Now that itch has is has left me from going and and, and when scale go yo maybe I got a chance. No, I left that behind. Yeah, me. forget it. You forget know, there will nah. be another day. Be another day. So, so yeah, man, that's that's some pretty good tips. And uh, Ruben was saying in the beginning that he started fishing with bait, just like a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And obviously now, Ruben, you fish with uh with artificial lures. Yeah, it's. I took it to another step, Mark. I. I, I <laughs> I would always see people fishing and I always was wondering, man, how do these people catch with this, you know, with lures and stuff like yeah. that? And um, I got to say it, bro, uh, the first person that taught me how to use lures, his name is Ruben. Ruben Villarreal, este, un buen amigo, man. He's, 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 he's not with us ahorita, pero 
Este, he was the one who taught me how to. He one day he said, "You know what, Tokayo, you ain't bringing your bait bucket anymore. <laughs> you ain't bringing your bait bucket anymore." And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Nope, we're gonna use yours, and I'm gonna teach you how to use them." Ever since then, bro, I've been hooked. And um, everyone has their style of fishing, Mark. I got a style. You might have a different style. Everybody has their own sure. style. You find your own style, what works best for you, and you stick to it. If it works, don't change it. And that's where I'm at right now, bro. Uh, and you're, yeah, and I'm guessing in, uh, in the type of retrieves, maybe the type of rod actions. And yeah, and you start learning, man. I, now I'm teaching. I didn't even know about rod actions. And now uh -huh. I actually started learning all that when I started rod building. Uh -huh. And so says now that I do a lot of rod building, now I can give people a, a little advice about what works better for what? what type of fishing. Uh -huh. And says. A, but bro Chinguentes I was the type of person that would say you don't have to be you don't have to get that technical with me Mark to learn how to fish but yeah. I kid you not bro there's a lot of things that you need to know before you go out there and ca actually catch fish yeah 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 and, it, and, and it, the surprising thing is that uh, the more you learn the easier it is for you to catch fish definitely and and there's there's luck in I believe this man there's always going to be luck in fishing but there's a lot of strategicness that yes, comes with yes, it that yes. a lot of people might not consider. You know, the smallest change in your tackle, the smallest change in your maybe switching from uh, rod actions, maybe any little small change. And like you say, the more you the more you get used to it, the easier it gets, and, and the more you learn. But yeah, you know, there's a lot. Of, like he says, technicality into it, and and um, you I would, believe you, you would think uh, you would think it, you wouldn't take much into consideration. But now that I'm really really deep into fishing, Mark kayak fishing for the most part, as the, you take a lot of things into consideration before you go out fishing, man. Yeah. Uh, all right, Ruben. You know what? Maybe do I have wheelers? Okay, I got wheelers, jigs. All right, good. Do I have a quarter rounds, Jay? Just in case the fish are not in the shallow, I can go jump into <laughs> deeper waters and I can work the bottom. All right. So what if they don't want the the, 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 the heavier stuff? All right, bring a spoon. Maybe they're after a spoon. Definitely. Bringing your dark colors, your, your, your light colors. Man, there's so much into the it that, yeah. that you will never finish learning it all. But you, you won't. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of, um, of, of stuff that, that can help out, you know, and I've I know a lot of people will say I've heard it, and people have said, "Well, I can catch fish with my my rod." And yes, yes, you can. I catch fish with a botecito. Ruben yes, has caught can. fish with a botecito. Yes, you can. You know what, Mark? Um, <laughs> uh, it's surprising. And, and, I, and I always, I always say this, and I, I don't know if you ever do. I, I don't try to shove a rod that I built uh, because you can fish with a Walmart rod, and that's fine. And I always tell people, "Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, you can." And, 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 and custom rods is not for everyone. Yeah, it is. I've learned in this business, Mark, that custom rods is not for everyone. Not because not because they're expensive. No, because even the most even the person with the most money that can afford the most expensive custom rod, it might not even be for them. Yeah, because they do not know yeah. how to but, use that. Rod. <laughs> but I, I try to tell them from my experiences because I got my first custom rod done uh, seven years ago. Uh huh. And I didn't know much of kayak fishing or fishing, but what happened is that that rod has a meaning to me, man. Definitely. It has a lot of meaning to it. And I retired that rod already, and I always try to transmit that to the customer, Mark. Uh, you know, uh, custom rods or something is the, that means a little bit more to you, man. You're, you, you're going you're gonna to take care of it more than what you think, man. Oh, yeah. And, and that's something yeah. that we tell our customers here, man. Yeah, yeah you got it. It's your new baby. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's your new stuff. <laughs> But yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's good, man. If if there's anything, if I I can I can say something, Mark. I really appreciate. I really appreciate everyone that is on the nine five six kayak anglers, and that is part of that page, man, because it has made me who I am. And I keep uh, myself humble. Este raza. Yeah. It has gotten me a long way, man. And you, I'd be surprised right now how many people I actually at my kayak tournament or our kayak tournament. I went table by table, Mark, saying thank you. Thank you for coming by, man. Hey, yeah. I hope to see you yeah. next year. And it's it's actually surprising that I walked through every table and I know every, I knew every single one of them. That's Soccer awesome, man. Fishing, man. So uh, before we close out the episode, man, I wish we can sit here and, and discuss. Maybe we'll have another episode here soon uh, talking about maybe... Um, you know, fishing styles and gear and stuff so like that know. because because uh, that's that's a great subject, right? So, so everybody, I invite everyone to join Nine Five Six Kayak Anglers Group on Facebook. Check out Ruben Sanchez. Everybody that's part of that that uh, Facebook community, 
So before we wrap it up, Ruben, what what would you suggest to somebody out there trying to maybe start a group just like you, maybe build their their own company like a rod building, maybe a tackle company? What what's one good piece of advice that you would recommend to these people? Man, that's a good question, Mark. Um, don't don't ever change, man. Don't change. Um, people that come to my shop, the first thing I tell them is stay humble always always look back to who's behind you who pushed you to be where you're at always see the people that are buying rods from you always look back to these people and say you know what man these these are the people making me yeah i ain't nobody without these people and those is if there's something and advice that i can give somebody man is grind hustle Put on, put in the time, and don't ever, ever forget where you came from. Y, y otra cosa, another thing, man, is to always grind. There's one thing, Mark, and I admire you, bro. I admire you for posting your page, your, your business, and no matter what, Mark, no matter what, bro, eh, you might be, there might be people who say, ching, oh, this guy again posting, but you don't know that from that post, bro, two or three, you might have two or three customers coming to your shop. And that's what you need in your shop. Entonces, I, I admire you for hustling, bro. And that's it, that's what it takes. And if I have something that I can give somebody an advice, and I'm not I'm not a big company or anything, bro. But I'm I'm, I'm glad that I'm where I'm at because of who's behind me. Is to keep grinding, man. Keep grinding. Don't ever let your hopes down. And believe me, Mark. And I'm pretty sure you're at that. You've been at that point where there's people out there that can be bad, awful, and they'll try and bring you down. And how I see that, bro, is shake it off. Move and you forward. and you got a big road ahead of yourself that people are watching you, man. And if there's yeah. anything, bro, it's that no, man, keep keep grinding, bro. Keep grinding, keep grinding. That's awesome, man. That's some that's some beautiful advice. And, and um, yeah, the La Kayak page, bro, man, go on, dude, go on, and, and you build the page. You're the you're you're the one doing the page. You always took the page, Mark. You have your page. I mean, been organizada. You want to build a page? Hey, go for it. Just uh, put the time in. And I'm pretty sure you've put a lot of time in your oh. page, man. And I know it. And I know what it takes to run a page, a, a successful page like yours. You put the time in. Por eso mucha gente no entiende when you have a personal page that you've built for four, five, six, seven years. They don't know how much time you've put on that page, man. Yeah, man. Definitely. <laughs> So yeah, chase your dream and grind hard. Don't give up. Don't ever be discouraged by any negativityness. And um, yeah, man, post, 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 post. Use social post. media as your advantage because yep. that's free marketing, everybody. Yes. Yeah, um, you <laughs> Don't took, be dumb. <laughs> you took the words. You took the words from me right now. Yeah. If there's another big advice, I would say, bro, right now, right now, is the social media is free. And we didn't have that back back then. And um, if I can give anybody an advice to start a small business, 90% of my sales come from TikTok. I agree. Social media. 90%. So, hey, go on there and get it. Hey, sh do, what, do what you can, man. You got to grind it. Man, Ruben, it was awesome having you as a guest. Hopefully, we can have you again. Hey, let me know, Mark. I'm always so. Done, so, Ruben, God willing, yeah. um, God willing, I'll be going to Florida by the end of the month. And I'll be doing a kayak um, tour. By the way, Mark, before you continue, I kind of, I'm jealous that you went to Busos before I did. <laughs> I think you're the one that suggested yes, that too. <laughs> I, I, I suggested Busos. And if there's something that I've always wanted to do, bro, and I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. and just really busy. And I've, I've told some of my friends, if there's something I'm jealous about you, bro, is that you went to Busos before I did. <laughs> Oh, that is something well, I want to do, bro. Well, if you do, man, and, and um, the opportunity is there for me to tag along with you and whoever I you're going you with, a great time out there, man. I would, I would definitely go because um, there's a lot that I can kind of help out. Yes, yes. Because hey, you I go there learning, you go there not knowing the fisheries, nah, nah. but within the days that you're fishing, you learn more and more about those fisheries, oh, yeah. what you need, what you need to do. And man, I got an amazing story on that. But Ruben, um, yeah, man, we're going to Florida. And um, I thought it would be awesome to talk kayak fishing before yep. this Florida trip. And a big shout out to 956 Kayak Anglers. Hopefully we do make it to Florida because um, I'm trying to kayak fish 
as many areas that I can in Florida. Okay, and to try to yes, <laughs> try to bring that content Hell back yeah. to the nine five six. Bring it, Ruben. Um, is there anything else you would like to say on the show? Honestly, before Mark, we close it off. Yes, Mark. Uh, one big shout out to someone that uh, you know a few weeks or actually last week we lost a kayak angler and it wasn't uh, through fishing. It was through uh, other stuff outside uh, fishing, and I want to dedicate this podcast to one of our own, man, to one of our 956 kayak anglers, uh, Justice Gonzalez, who we lost last week. Uh, like I said, not through fishing, uh, it was other stuff. Este, and uh, I want to, I really want to um, uh, dedicate this episode, and, and, and I want to thank them for, for making me who I am. And hopefully, uh, we- Ruben, 956 kayak anglers, Battleborn Rods. And we hope to see you soon.